it has to be something that connects to me. So even though, I mean, Grand Seiko pretty much proposed to me that night, I pretty much said, hey, you know what? Hold back on the engagement ring. Let's wait a little while. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see what happens. And then we'll move forward from there. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Derek and today I'm sitting down with my good friend, Ricardo. We're gonna talk about some watches and real quick, just to let everyone know, this is just a fun video Ricardo and I are doing today. Last year we did a video on the Longines Spirit. So we thought it'd be good to kind of collaborate again and just talk about watches and talk about a new piece that Ricardo just picked up today. So with that out of the way, Ricardo, why don't you first introduce yourself? Sure, so uh, my name is Ricardo Sime. I love watches. Uh, I also write as a contributing writer for Time and Tide out of Australia. I've been collecting, I'd say now for about five, six years, um, learning a lot, uh, making mistakes like we all do. Oh, I know uh, that for myself too. Both, both emotional mistakes where you're just like, I don't like this watch anymore. And those really bad financial mistakes where you're like, oh, what did I do? But it's all a learning um, experience and one of my favorite hobbies. It is really my main hobby. Um, and it's something I really love. Dude, that's awesome. When we first met each other, it was just out of the uh, pure kind of enjoyment of watches. You know, even though I worked with my store, Carrot & Co, um, at the time you weren't working with Time & Tide, so I want to ask you, like, first, how how has that been for you transitioning now to having, you know, some day to day work within the watch industry versus before when you were more doing it from your own house, from your own point of view? Like, yep. um, how's that feel now? So it's weird. Um, I, I mentioned this. It, it's, it's, of course, a hobby. Um, one thing I will say is I have like a main nine to five. That's that's the job. And then I have the, the work that I do with Time and Tide. And I have to say the transition was a lot easier than I expected. Um, sometimes you start, you, when you get into that path where it's no longer you're just, you know, spontaneously doing it. And now it's more of a, you're sitting down and you're really putting your thoughts together. So like as I'm writing an article about a certain watch and I'm, I'm talking about certain aspects of it, I'm really relating to those aspects in terms of my opinions and my viewpoints and and you know I'm, I'm kind of erasing old viewpoints uh, that I had in the past and I'm kind of learning new things and I'm saying you know what yeah actually I was wrong on that actually this is a great thing you know what yeah I will get this and it's I don't think I would have been able to accomplish that if I was just still spontaneously creating content um, there's something to writing about rotches and really being around rotches that kind of forces you to really get to know what it is you're talking about. So with that, I want to, I mean, obviously we have this one watch sitting in front of us, so I'm sure someone's going to start wondering, what, what is this? This and one is a, uh, uh, you, you can go. So <laughs> this is a GMC from Grand Seiko. It is one of the recent models that they released. It has the ceramic bezel. It's green. It has that beautiful case. It has the five link bracelet. And for the reference guys out there, it's SBGE257. So obviously in Ricardo and I's own conversation, we've talked about a lot of watches over the years. Every time there's a new watch release, even if we're not interested in owning it, we, we there's a conversation around like, what do you think about this? This is cool. This is a, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But there is one brand that I've seen Ricardo kind of have a lot of interest in but not find the right piece. And it wasn't until this new piece just launched and Ricardo, you, you even wrote an article almost settling for a nine <laughs> chords GMT of something you really wanted. And then like, it was like not even a week later and then this new SBGM 247 launched and oh, um, man. tell yeah. me like, so what, where has your fascinated with Grand Seiko started? Oh man, long story. <laughs> Let's get into it. Uh, so, you know, of course, for many of us, when we start, we, you know, one of our first few watches is a Seiko. So that was kind of my viewpoint. Um, and as I started to learn more, someone kind of haphazardly, haphazardly mentioned, oh, there's Grand Seiko. 
And I'm in the, in the back of my mind, there was this joke. Oh, so a bigger Seiko. <laughs> and, and I was, of course, corrected. And I learned a little bit more about what GS is. And I, from that point forward, I kind of wanted to know as much as I could about what the brand stood for and what it kind of represented. So that was always in the back of my head as I continued collecting. I would go to other brands. I would be, you know, check out Swiss brands. Um, I would pick up Swiss watches. Um, but there was always this, this thing in the back of my head, like, yeah, GS, 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 GS. Things in terms of the relationship between me and the brand changed. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar. There was a limited edition that was released through Houdinki with Grand Seiko. It wasn't even the watch that really changed things for me. It was how the watch was advertised. That advertising was of a gentleman with his family, um, with his daughter, uh, with his son, kind of the whole nuclear family. Um, but the big thing for me was the gentleman was black. Um, it's such a rarity to see African Americans in watch advertising. So when I saw that, it was just like, it, it, it's on one note, it's kind of sad that it, it kind of blew my mind because if it was something that happened more often, it wouldn't have clicked with me and, and connected to me so strongly. Um, but on the other side, it still connected with me. I knew that that was a purposeful decision. It wasn't like a fly by night. Oh yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna put a black eye. Like I know someone somewhere said, let's do it this way. That really resonated with me. From that point forward, my love for the brand turned to I will own a Grand Seiko one day. Yeah, when I look at that advertisement, I think it would have been so easy for it would have been so easy to just feature a Japanese man featured on a Japanese watch advertisement. But the fact that Hodinki and Grand Seiko has a huge audience that can touch a huge demographic of people, it made even more of an impact that they chose to feature a black man, a black family man, when we usually don't see this much black representation. And instead of us complaining about it, Hodinki and Grand Seiko went and did it. And they had an ability to storytell rather than just try to sell us a watch. Massive respect for the team behind that because I mean, look at the impact it has made for you and not just for you to buy a watch, but for you, you know, on an emotional level of that, hey, I feel seen and I feel represented. It was that simple aesthetic of silver and blue. There was there was nothing else there, was silver and blue. And it just in my mind, the watch was beautiful, but really it was how it was portrayed in the advertising that really stood to me. So really, for a lot of people out there who say, oh, advertising doesn't matter, sometimes it does. Sometimes it really does, and it, it connects enough with people to the point where they want to get the watch and want to be involved with that brand. You, sometimes you think nothing is done, but actually, when you do something so perfectly, people will say you did nothing at all. Yeah. That's, that's how I think about it. That advertisement was my version of Patek's you don't buy the watch for yourself. You buy it for your for the next generation. That was my version. I, so, so for me, like that, that meant so much to me. And like you, like you're saying, it wasn't like you know some of the advertisements where you see where it's just like ah, the watch, or I'm running it. Ah, the watch. It was here's a dad. He's sitting there at the piano. He's with his kids. His son looks like he's interested in the watch. And now that really even connects even more for me because I have a two-year-old and like that, that meant a lot to me. So it was a matter of I need to get into this brand. Um, but I will say this, until they make something that I want, I will never just, I will never just buy a watch just to buy into a brand. It has to be something that connects to me. So even though, I mean, Grand Seiko pretty much proposed to me that night, I pretty much said, hey, you know what? Hold back on the engagement ring. Let's wait a little while. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see what happens. And then we'll move forward from there. So 
That yeah. was almost like the perfect segue into, <laughs> I mean, let's just go straight into it. What, what, so then, you know, I, I noticed you, you've been wanting a GMT watch, yes. right? You've been yes. wanting a GMT watch for a while. You said, Hey, Derek, what does Grand Seiko have right now in GMTs with mm. this kind of style with the 24 hour scale on the outside of the bezel? So I showed you pieces like the SBGE 257, the green dial, mm -hmm. also the other swing drive GMTs. Um, which at the time, obviously, is a huge deal because a lot of people were asking for 40 millimeter sport, you know, collection watches from Grand Seiko. So they mm -hmm. did come out with that. And then also we looked at some of um, the Quartz GMTs, the SBGN003 and SBGN005, um, which also has that aesthetic. And you wrote an article about it saying <laughs> yeah. like, something. I think it was something like, don't be afraid of 9F Quartz or something. It, it was basically like, it's so good but because of the way I think as collectors, we've been brought to believe, it's hard to make that leap to 9F because of just this idea that's kind of been embedded in us that if it ain't mechanical, it's not worth it. And you, you talk to people and even when they tell you that's not the case, you feel that undertone in what's being discussed. My article was basically trying to say, it's worth everything, but one, you don't get it as a, oh, I'm settling for this. How can I say, it's not the side dish. It's the main attraction. Ooh. So you, you, you don't. <laughs> you Spoken don't. word right here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been on a GMT, like just mission for a long time. And I always told myself, that's probably gonna be the, the GS I get simply because they have a nice, um, a nice family of GMT watches. Is the GMT one of your favorite complications? Yes, um, especially in my current situation where I have my main job and I, I'm also writing for a publication that's based out of Australia, that's sure. 15, 15 hour time difference. Like when there's a deadline, when there are things like that, it's nice to just look at my wrist and be like, oh shoot, I should have wrote that. Like, okay. <laughs> So it's something I actually use. And yes, um, people could say, hey, yeah, you could just grab your phone and check. But it's actually faster for me to just look at my wrist because guess what? My phone is not just always glued to my hand and I'm just walking around like this. Like if I step away from my desk and I'm talking to someone, my phone's at my desk. So I think this is the perfect time. So then when Grand Seiko just launched the SBGM 245 blue dial and SBGM 247, the green dial, automatic GMTs. So then what clicked right away as soon as you saw those? So I always told myself I wanted a steel bezel. It's one of the main reasons when the 257 came out that I, not to say I wasn't a fan of it, but it didn't quite click with me. It, it wasn't the watch I knew that I wanted to get. So I always liked the sportier three link GS models. And I also knew I'd want it two ways, either in a, with a spring drive movement with the power reserve in the back or um, in a classic mechanical version um, with that nice 72 hours of power reserve. I, everyone around me kind of knows what it is that I'm looking for. So it's almost like I have like little minions out there that the second they see <laughs> something, they're like, Ricardo, that's what you want. My, uh, my editor, Zach, um, he, know, he knew exactly what I wanted. And when he got the email from GS9, like he immediately called me. I think was, I had food in my mouth. I was at home and he was just like, the watch you want. They just released the watch you want. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, the watch you want, they just released it. Released it. And he sent me the link. I'm like, oh my God, like that's the one. And it was so the one that I think the next day, I, I, I may have even messaged no, no, you that you, night. <laughs> it was like, you know, I'm in bed. I get a message. Sometimes I ignore them. But I'm like, oh, Ricardo messaged me. Hey, Derek, have you seen the new SPJ 247, the green dial? You have to tell me about it. Can you tell me all the information? I'm like, I'm like, um, I need to, I need to, I'll get back to you tomorrow. Let me get back into the store and then see what information's out there. Mm -hmm. But what it looks like, yeah, it's, it looks like, the, you know, the, this case size. Um, the specs, I think they're 40.5 millimeter. So it's that same as the SBG 257. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll put it on screen somewhere. Yeah. We're going to put all the text here. I, I yeah. think it's a little bit thicker, but, um, and that kind of goes into, you know, some of the conversations about Grand Seiko and thickness, but trust me, put it on your wrist first. 
yeah. you'll you'll become a believer. So it's it's a little bit thicker, but it it wears really well. So this is like a it's cool because this is actually a real first impression. Like I'm getting it from you as the person who decided this is going to be your watch. This is your GS, your first one. So welcome to to uh to GS9 because I think that's uh you know you you now have access to to join that club. I got a chance to actually see the watch for the first time at watch time. Um, you know, Joe and the boys were there. I, when I Joe say and Joe the and the boys, <laughs> I say Joe Kirk um, from Grand Seiko. Um, they were there and they actually had these um, these there. And I actually got to hold it, hold the watch in my hands for the first time. There's always, I think, like that voice in your head as a watch collector where until you actually have the watch in your hand, you still have questions as to whether you made the right decision or not. Mm. So I got there held the watch in my hand, um, spent about five, 10 minutes with it. And basically it was like, okay, you made the absolute right choice. So this whole time I'm trying, I've just been waiting. I'm like, I can't wait. Like, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. And then today. I was also at watch time. I got to see the samples. I took some photos. I was a little worried. I was like, I think if I post this on Instagram, Ricardo is going to think he's going to mess. And it actually, it happened. So I was like, oh, I'm, not, I'm doing a Grand Seiko week leading up into GS9's first event. So I've been posting Grand Seiko every day, you know, um, just to share what I like from Grand Seiko, some new pieces, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just my own personal take on it. And then I posted the, the piece today and Ricardo was like, he comments immediately. He probably has notifications on. It was like, <laughs> hey, um, he's like, yeah, I was going to ask, is this the one? And I was like, I was like, I was like, wait, actually, something came into the store today. Let me check the packages. I'll text you. And then lo and behold, it was actually the watch the same day I posted it. So yep. it was like literally perfect timing where uh, oh, man. this happened. Yeah. And then I basically just ran over here. Yeah. Um, and and it's it's one of those things, man, like there's so much behind this watch. And there's, there's such a connection um, in my mind between me and the brand that like just the experience today was, it was kind of a little surreal. Um, it's weird. Like, listen, I know there, there are some of you guys out here that I'm talking about a watch in like these terms and you're like, okay, like what, what the heck is he talking about? Like, it's just a watch. And for a lot of people like me who love this hobby, it is definitely more than just a watch. So like getting to put this on my, on my wrist and actually like seeing it, man, like it's, it's, everything I thought it would be and more. I mean, it's... So what, what are some things you liked about it? Like okay. run down, I'll, I'll run captivated. Down, I'll you. run down the scale. Still bezel, love it. It's one of the earlier original um, GMTs, not from Grand Seiko, but from Seiko um, themselves, had a steel bezel. And this was in the late 60s. So they, they have a history of doing steel bezels and, and GMTs. I'm a brushed surface kind of guy. So even though, you know, one of the high points and highlights of Grand Seiko is their polishing, polishing that kind of highlights certain aspects of the watch, but it's not the main mm. attraction. So like for me, like just that nice chamfer on the sides going from lug to lug, that's beautiful for me. And, and the, the transitions are crisp and the brushing is just amazing. And one thing I really didn't know that would really attract me to the watch even more, and I didn't know this until watch time, is just how the indexes catch the light. It's not a dead or dull watch. Like, it feels like it's alive. Like, you move this in the light and those, those indexes, and they just bing, 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 bing. <laughs> it's like a little light show. Sparkles of light bouncing off the second hand. Exactly. Kind of yeah. and And... It's still toned down because this is all happening on the dial. It's not like the whole case is doing this, which for me and my personal taste, I like like watches that are a little more toned down. So getting that nice little bit of glitz without it being like ah in your face <laughs> is exactly what I wanted in a watch. This day, oh man, I mean the, the bracelet, the taper is great. Um, the thickness is amazing. It's a full brush bracelet. Too. Yeah. So it, usually Grand Seiko has like those little polish centered yeah. uh, links, but this one's like full brushed with just the polishing on the side where you would adjust the bracelet. Yeah. And it, it's funny, one thing here that I know some people 
um, probably didn't like about the watch, which is the placement of the date window um, uh, at, at, at four o'clock. That's actually something I like because it's like a quirkiness of the watch. It's like a GS thing. So it, it's one thing to wear a watch from a brand, but you're wearing a watch that's so the brand. It's not them trying to be anything else. It's not them, you know, taking on some other approach. It's them being them. And they're just like, you like it or not, this is us being us. And it, comparing it to here, you know, the, the date when it was framed of glitz on a dial. And it's, it's like it's, such little difference. Yeah. That it, it, to most people, you, they wouldn't notice it, but like to have the date window framed, it actually kind of creates a, more symmetry. Yeah. Like with all the hour markers around the dial. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's almost like its own mini like index. It just, it works. Like there's just overall, but when you get that watch and it's just everything clicks and there's like something in your mind that kind of says that yeah, like this isn't leaving me anytime soon. And I'm probably gonna be honeymooning with this thing for at least maybe a month. <laughs> so you should. You should I'm enjoy. gonna be wearing this like for a long time. You know, a little quella coordination here. I got, I got plans, hey, I got plans. Hey, perfect time in fall too. <laughs> oh know. yeah, oh man, ah yeah. oh, man, the, the touch of orange here. Oh, oh there's so wow. much, so much about perfect this timing, watch. <laughs> that is just, man, like, Oh man, yeah, I'm I'm I am on cloud nine. I am <laughs> jubilated. I am so happy. So I I I I think that's the best the best place to leave it is just I'm very very happy. Again, this is not sponsored. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is it's, just <laughs> it's just want to put it out there, like you know, before being a watch retailer, before writing for watches and bridging that together here. Like both of Ricardo and I are watch enthusiasts ourselves. Like yeah. we've owned watches ourselves. We collect. I've made tons of mistakes and I've also learned a lot through those. And, you know, I, the way Ricardo is feeling about this watch reminds me of how I felt when I got my Grand Seiko SPGM 235, mm -hmm. which the video of my three year review should be out already. So um, you guys can check that out if you want to see. But it's pretty much echoing the same kind of feeling that. Ricardo is kind of uh, explaining here. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, you're gonna have to um, let me know um, where I can get some some straps for this. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you some straps too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I I I'm already envisioning a like orange brown leather strap with just enough thickness so that it comes off as sporty. Oh, with a yeah. nice taper. Yes, yes. Yeah. And Zach, I know how you feel Zach. about <laughs> bracelets and straps, but. This one is mine. It will be on a strap soon enough. That's just a note to Zach, my editor, but he'll know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Direct call out to Zach. <laughs> it's, I'm just happy, man. And it's, it's nice to sit here and actually express how I feel and talk to someone who knows kind of that feeling as you're saying with, with your GMT, so. Oh, or man. GS Brothers now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I was yeah. just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> But then the funny thing is, as I'm like going and I'm parking to come pick this up, there was like this little voice in my head that was still saying, play the safe choice, get the blue. And then I get here and I see the watch and I'm just like, no. And I kind of just like, like smack that. it out, screw, screw that. that. Yeah. <laughs> that. No, we're getting the green. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that that's the green for me is just, it's just perfect, it's perfect. Dude, that is awesome. I'm gonna start to, to wrap this up. Um, for anyone who's new to collecting, uh, outside of Grand Seiko, just in general, watch collecting, what would be that one advice you'd share with them? Oh, wow. Um, you put me on the spot, why don't you? Um, it's okay, we can cut out, you can take time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'd have to say, the second you feel like you're, for, you're being forced to pick a certain watch, is the second that you're kind of losing what it is that's so great about collecting. Don't let all the noise and all the different opinions like just, just bog you down and make you think that I have to get this specific watch. Take the time, have some fun, learn. People will act like they were born with the knowledge that they have now in terms of when you, you, you may talk to some other collectors. Um, but everybody had to grow to that point. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. 
Don't be afraid to go out there and test out what it is you really like or don't like. Do it wisely. I'm not saying put the house, put up the house for a watch, but there's ways to go about it where you could protect yourself, but at the same time, experiment and find what it is that you really want in a watch. Um, it doesn't happen day one. You're not really going to know what it is that you're going to love about a watch the first day you start collecting. It's something that you have to grow to. You have to experience. You get to a point. And like the old theme I said in the beginning of this video, that can also change. That's not set in stone. We change as collectors. There are things in, the, in our early years that we loved. By year six or seven, we're like, oh, I never want to see that again. You know, just go with the flow. Just that's the, I, I guess that all that boils down to is just go with the flow. I, I will definitely echo that. I think right now in a time where social media, for example, Instagram is so huge. I scroll down my feed and I just see a lot of watches every day. And sometimes I see a lot of the same watches and yeah. it kind of makes me think, should I own this one? Because a lot of people like it, I must like it too. Yeah. And I like that you're saying to really stick to your roots and don't be afraid to kind of make those mistakes when it comes to collecting because you'll, you'll never really know it, whether you like something or not until you actually just like jump right in. Yeah and go through the process, enjoy the process, learn from there, time goes on, your taste will change. And I don't think we'll ever hit a static point where we know exactly what we want at mm -hmm. every point, but we'll know enough what things we like, what things we don't like. And every once in a while, we'll do something fun and uh, go outside of our own box yep. and mm -hmm. try those things. But uh, I have to say, Derek, thank you for having me. Um, it felt great to really express um, how I feel about this watch and what it means to me and just some of my thoughts on collecting just in general. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for uh, being a great friend. Um, I've, I love when we partner up and do videos like this, so mm -hmm. I hope we can do more. If you guys want to see more videos like this in the future, you guys can uh, leave a comment below on what your thoughts are. Do you agree with Ricardo on a story? Just kidding. It's not going to change his mind anyways. <laughs> no, um, it, it's it's because that's another thing about collecting. It's not a matter of agreement. It's, it's, yeah. it's listen, there are people who are going to love this watch. There are people who are not going to love this watch. Okay. They're not the ones who are wearing it. So it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. Well, thanks so much for coming on. And thank uh, you. I'll see you very soon on Saturday. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. GS9, I'll see you guys. And I'll be sporting this. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.